So Nick, you been productive lately? Oh man, hell yeah. Oh really? Doing what? Uh... What's happening guys? My name is Nicholas Renaud and in this video we're going to be taking a look at iris tracking using a library called WebGazer. This will allow us to track all of our eye movements on the screen. Let's take a deeper look as to what we'll be going through. So first up, what is WebGazer? Well, WebGazer is an open source library that was built by the awesome team at Brown University. Now, the wicked thing about this is that it allows you to leverage eye tracking in real time through your browser. Now, the cool thing about WebGazer as well is that they've got some great demos, which is what we're going to be going through today. So you can see on the screen that I'm actually using my eyes to control a ball within this demo game, which is what we'll be taking a look at. Now, on that note, let's take a look as to what we're going to be going through today. So first up, what we're going to be doing is installing WebGazer. So this is really straightforward. So as long as you've got Node pre-installed, it's reasonably straightforward. It's just an NPM install. Then we're going to take a look at the calibration demo. So this allows you to test out how well it's actually tracking your eyes in real time. So you're going to double click a dot and you'll effectively calibrate WebGazer to be able to more accurately track your eyes. It's pretty cool. Then what we'll do is we'll test out the collision game. So everything that we're going to be doing today is really as part of the pre-built demo that they've got. But again, if you enjoy this video, we can take this further and build it into some of our own custom apps. Now let's take a look as to how this is all going to work. So first up, what we're going to be doing is downloading WebGazer from GitHub. So this is all available as an open source library. Then we'll install it using Node and then we'll be able to run it through our browser. Now the cool thing about this is that it just leverages a commercial webcam. So whatever webcam you've got on your computer, you'll be able to leverage that to be able to perform that iris tracking. And again, the demos are pretty cool. You're gonna be able to see it working in real time reasonably quickly. On that note, ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, what's happening? So in order to leverage WebGazer JS, we're going to be leveraging the WebGazer library. Now, the cool thing about this is that it's all open source, so you can try it out, use it inside of your own projects, but they've also got a great set of demos. So you can actually just get this up and running really easily and actually take a look at the baseline code. Now, that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. So it's a slight bit of difference compared to my normal walkthrough tutorials. We're really just going to be taking a look at the package. And if you want me to do more with this, say, for example, build a scrollable web browser or build um, some eye tracking for an e-commerce store, for example, again, by all means, do let me know in the comments below. But we're going to take this one pretty easily today. So right now I'm at the WebGazer documentation site. So this is available through webgazer.cs.brown.edu. Now, again, this is built by an amazing team at Brown University. So they've got a whole bunch of amazing developers on that team and computer scientists that are actually building this up. Now we're gonna be able to leverage their expertise and try this out. So the only, or the only real dependency that you're going to need to be able to get this up and running is to have Node.js installed. Now, again, all of this code is going to be written inside of JavaScript and it's all based on Node.js. So if you don't have Node.js installed, all you need to do is download the version that you need and try to download the most current one. So I noticed that there were some errors when I used an older version. So use the current one. It's going to make sure that it works all successfully. But again, if you get stuck, hit me up in the comments below and I can help you out. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to go on ahead and test this out. So all we need to do is really just go to the GitHub repository for the WebGazer site. Now this is available through github.com and then if you go to the Brown HCI website, which is Brown HCI forward slash WebGazer, you're gonna be able to access this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to clone down this repository. We're then going to go into the examples folder and start them up and then we'll start playing around. So again, it's going to be pretty straightforward and more of a fun example today rather than a hardcore tutorial. So what we'll do is we'll grab this link and then I'm going to open up a new command prompt. So I've already got one here. And what I'll do is I'm just going to type in git clone and then paste in that link. So just to reiterate that command, so I've just written git and then clone and then HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash brown HCI forward slash webgazer. Again, all of the documentation as well as the links for this will be available in the description below. So you'll be able to pick this up and run with it. Now, in this case, this is going to clone everything from that brown HCI repository into my D drive. So once that's cloned down, I'll show you what that actually looks like. Let's make this full screen as well. Cool. 
So all we need to do once we've got that command written is hit enter and this will actually go on ahead and clone WebGazer and then we'll be able to test it out. So let's let that clone and we'll be right back in about a minute or so. Alrighty, so you can see that it's now finished cloning. So we've received all of the objects and we've resolved all of our deltas. So this should mean effectively that we've now gone and cloned that WebGazer repository down. Now, if I actually take a look in that folder, you'll see that I've now got a folder called WebGazer. So I can actually go and take a look at that now. And this is just gonna mimic exactly everything that we had inside of that GitHub repository. Oh, we're going a little crazy there. Now, what we're gonna do rather than working with it inside of our folder explorer is we'll actually open this up inside of a code editor. Now, again, you can open this up inside of any code editor that you want. Really, we're not gonna be writing much code. We're just gonna be starting up the servers and installing our dependencies. So what we'll do is I'm just gonna open it up inside of VS Code. Now I can CD into that WebGazer folder to do that. And then to open it up, I can just type in code dot and this will open up everything that's in that current folder inside of VS Code. So if I run that, you'll see that I now have my WebGazer package over here. So you can see that that's WebGazer uh, and I've got all of this, which I'll just close down, don't need that. Now, what we need to do is really, really straightforward. So we just need to CD into or go into this www directory here, and we can actually start up the example demo. So if I actually show you, this is all documented in the official GitHub repository. And again, all credit to them. So they've gone and written all of this stuff and made it publicly available. I'm just sort of showing what's possible with it um, and running through that demo. But again, if you wanted to see more stuff with this, by all means, do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you want to do with it. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna CD into that www folder and then we're gonna run npm install and then run npm run serve. So let's go on ahead and do that. So I'm going to open up a new terminal inside of VS Code, which I can just run by hitting control tilde. And then so we'll CD into www, which you can see there. So CD www, oh, that's one w too many. And then what we can do is run npm install and this is going to go on ahead and install all the dependencies required to be able to leverage WebGazer. So again, this might take a couple of minutes. It shouldn't take too long, but once that's done, we'll actually be able to start up our server using the npm run serve command. So this is going to run a script, which allows us to leverage the WebGazer library. Now, in this case, it's right down the bottom here. So I'm just going to type in CLS to clear this. And this is just going to clear everything that I've currently got in my command prompt. So what I can then do is start it up. So to do that, all we need to do is run npm run serve. And this is gonna kick WebGazer off. So you can see it started and it looks really similar to the documentation, right? So that's what it's meant to look like. Now, if we wanna test out these examples, all you need to do is hit examples. And then from here, you've got a whole bunch of different demos that you can try out. So we're gonna first try out the calibration which is this one here. And then we'll try out the ball collision game, which is again, pretty cool. So you get to try to move this orange ball around the screen. So we'll start off with the calibration. So all we need to do is hit try live demo, and then it'll ask you to calibrate or not. And I can hit okay. And you can see it's already picking up my face, right? So that's pretty cool. So if I bring, look a little closer, you can see it looks like it's, I believe it's using TensorFlow.js in the background. So it's get it, grabbing my face, it's grabbing all of the coordinates from my face. But it's taking this one step further and actually performing some iris tracking. So you can see this little red dot moving around the screen. Now, I'm currently looking where the plus is. So you can see that it's really accurately or reasonably accurately following where I'm actually looking. And all I'm doing is moving my eyes, like I'm not actually moving my mouse. So I can move, look at somewhere else. So say, for example, I look in the top right hand corner of the screen. Well, right now it doesn't look like it's following too well, but let's actually go on ahead and calibrate it. So to calibrate, all you need to do is go to these little dots that you can see on the screen. So right now they're not highlighted that well, but you can see that there's a red dot here, there's a red dot there, and there's a red dot there. What you need to do is just hover your mouse over it or so bring your little cursor over it and then double click that five times as you're looking at it, right? So if I do that and then click five times until it goes yellow. So that dot's now calibrated Then go down to this one. One, two, three, four, five. Go down to the bottom one. One, two, three, four, five. Go down to this one. One, two, three, four, five. Go down to this one. One, two, three, four, five. So all I'm doing is I'm clicking five times on the dot while I'm looking at it. One, two, three, 
four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then last one, one, two, three, four, five. There's one more. And then one, two, three, four, five. And then what you need to do is don't move your mouse and stare at the middle dot for five seconds. All right, so in this case, our accuracy measure is about 77%. Again, you could recalibrate for longer, but now if I go and move my eyes around, you can see it's performing way better. So, all right, so if I stare in the center of the screen, that's the center. Now say, for example, I go top right and then bottom right. Bottom right doesn't look like it's that great. Bottom left, top left, up. All right, what we'll do is we'll, let's recalibrate because this kind of looks a little sucky right now. So let's go on ahead, close that menu, double click, double click. And again, I'm hitting it six times. So if you don't get the greatest calibration the first time, just go on ahead and recalibrate. All right, so our accuracy measure is way higher now. So again, I just went and recalibrated. Now, if we move our eyes around, way better, right? All right, so top, what is that? Top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, center. Again, so it's performing way better now. So you can sort of see what's possible with this, right? So you could perform eye tracking and do a whole bunch of good stuff. I'm just moving this red dot around the screen. I'm actually thinking that what would be awesome with this is to build a game, like sort of like a um, like a rocket ship game and you control the rocket ship with your eyes and like shoot down targets and stuff. I think that'd be sweet. But again, that sort of shows you what's possible with the iris tracking. So we can move our eyes around and so on and so forth. But again, right now, all we're doing is we're moving a dot around the screen. Where this gets cooler is again, where you can start to build games. So if we go back to our homepage, You've also got this other example here, which is called the ball collision game. Now, this is where it starts to get pretty cool, right? So from here, you can actually move around or try to move around a particular ball. So there's some 3JS happening here and effectively you can control the game using your eyes. So if we hit try live demo, so you can see that we've got this little ball here. Now, if I move my eyes around, what you need to do to get this working is to start clicking. So as soon as I start clicking, it's going to start training. So wherever I'm looking is uh, effectively I'm performing calibration in a slightly different manner. So if I click around, it's going to start to get better. And so the way I normally calibrate this or the way I tested it out is try to click the yellow ball. And then as your eyes are following around, it'll start to train to perform better, right? So now if I take my mouse off the screen, I can do it just with my eyes. So you can see moving around. So if I look top right, bottom right, bottom left, can calibrate a bit more. So that's performing way better now. So again, if you if it's not performing that well, click into some spots to train it a little bit. So you can see now I'm performing, now I'm trying to move that yellow ball around. And it takes a little bit of practice to not just move your head around and actually just trace it with your eyes, but you can sort of see what's possible, right? So again, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can mess around with with web gaze. I'm just playing around here. So come on, yellow ball. There we go. All right, that's enough of me playing. So that about in a nutshell wraps up what is possible with web gaze. So again, a short demo today. I sort of just wanted to show you what's possible. If you'd like to see more with this, by all means, do let me know your ideas in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But again, I track in. On that note, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell and let me know what you'd like to use WebGazer for in the future. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.